Broadcasting live from the shimmer, blah, blah, shimmer, oh, no. From the shimmering got grotto. <laughs> See, nobody can say it. On the plane of Lorvard. Oh, the shimmering got foe. It's tap tap concede. Uh, I'm just gonna roll with it. We're going with this because. No, uh, we should restart. <laughs> yeah. Restart. Restart. Yeah, yeah, we can restart. That was dumb. Yeah. Oh. The way you like practice it. Broadcasting live from the Shimmering Grotto on the Plain of Lorwyn, this is Tap Tap Concede. Hello everybody and welcome to Tap Tap Concede. I am James and this week I'm joined by... Kathleen! And... It's bright in this grotto, but Nelson's here. Hey! And we are here today to crack some packs because, well, it's been about a month since we did the last one and we still have... 100,000 packs. 150,000 packs. How many packs did you get at Vegas? Uh, not that actually, I only got like two at Vegas. Good. Yeah, so it slowed down go? in in GPS, uh, but I think it's sped up in mail times. Right. Which is where I think the majority of our packs are coming. So we still have this two column box, and we probably have about another two column long box just off screen here in one of the drawers. Well, maybe if you hadn't shaken your booty so much in Vegas, the fans wouldn't have made it rain packs so hard. It's possible. It is possible. Uh, so we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, I want to thank our sponsors. We've got CardKingdom.com. Uh, slash LRR. Make sure to put in that slash LRR. It lets them know that we sent you. Uh, they've been sponsoring this podcast and a bunch of other stuff that we've been doing for many years now, and we love them, and we use them, and we recommend that you do too. So go check them out. Cardkingdom.com slash LRR. A kingdom of cards. A kingdom of cards. Uh, <laughs> currently, uh, there's... Hopefully by the time you're listening to this, um, Core 19 is coming out this Friday. And the idea with the buttons where they were going to be ready for when it comes time to fulfill your core 19 pre, uh, your core 19 orders. So, mm -hmm. if you're pre-ordering core 19, let them know that loading ready run sent you button please and you will get a button. Uh, or hopefully you will get a button. We know and the then, buttons have been not around. Yeah, and then starting hopefully a week from today, uh, we should be in the buttons for a good long while. We sent off three designs. Uh, so we should be good to go. So that's cardkingdom.com slash LRR. And of course, we couldn't do any of this without your support over at Patreon. Patreon.com slash Loading Ready Run. Thank you so much for your years of support. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, so go check it out. Patreon.com slash Loading Ready Run. All right. Let's crack some packs. I have a nice column here. Kathleen, if you would like to roll the die. But We've not got to open 2014 first, right? 18. No, no okay. 18. Okay. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We eight, were going to open 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Eight. Okay. But on the off chance we opened a Shimmering Grotto, we've decided not to do that. We are yeah. kicking off with a booster of Fallen Empires. This is from Gil and Sarah from Lincoln. Is that Lincoln? Yeah. I think it's Lincoln, Nebraska. That's uh, nice. Via mail time. Uh, Fallen Empires. Hey, this has got flavor text on the back. In the southern oceans of Dominaria Prime lay a continent of great kingdoms. Dominaria Prime. Far from the war between Urza and Mishra, the lands of Sarpedia prospered. But as the climate changed, resources dwindled and empires crumbled. Hideous new species arose in the forests and seas, forcing the Sep Separdians to fight for their very survival. Recruit these toughened warriors and vicious predators for your duels. But beware lest you fare no better than the fallen empires. Cool. What a great barb on the back. These are all going to be terrible. So fun fact, yep. the, uh, you can pick up a fresh pack of fallen empires today for pretty much retail price. <laughs> I think. <laughs> They, uh, they they printed two little Alpha Beta yep. and Legends uh, and Antiquities and Arabian Nights, but then with Fallen Empires eventually, they were like, why don't we just fulfill all the store uh, owners' orders? Like, everyone who wants to buy Magic Cards used to be like, you know, if you own a shop, you ask for like 15 cases and you get sent two. Right. And so you just, the next time you ask for 30 cases and maybe you get two and a half, right? Yeah. Um, and, and then and with Fallen had... Empires, they're like, here's your 45 cases of Fallen Empires. <laughs> oh, no. And now here we and are. they're still there. 20-ish yeah. years later. Yeah. 
still, yeah, ripe for the picking. You can still just buy this. Uh, first up, though, we've got, is this correct, Paul? Uh, How's the placement? Yeah, work. All right, River Merfolk. Uh, blue, blue for a 2-1. Summons a Merfolk. And for one blue, it has Mountain Walk until end of turn. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of a hard-to-cast Piker with an ability that maybe sometimes kind of works out in your favor. Uh, but maybe this is just as good as 2-1's got back in the day. Well, that's just not true. The best thing about <laughs> this card was that it allows you, allowed you to play Density Tribal more easily. Okay. Because before Fallen Empires, there just really weren't that many Merfolk total. Right. Uh, there was Lord of Atlantis. Yes. And, like, in the first set, I think he could literally only pump Clone or uh, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Ah. Right? So, and then I don't know if we saw any more Merfolk until this set. Maybe there's one or two more. They might have been, like, Gold and Legends or something. Anyways, um, yeah, this set brought a bunch of Merfolk, and this one only cost two mana. All right. So you wanted to jam it in case you were just beating down with Merfolk. Fair enough. Just the fact that it was a Piker with Mer that right. was a Merfolk. Uh, next up, we have Heroism. Two and a white for an enchantment. Uh, pay zero, sacrifice a white creature to have attacking red creature. Creatures deal no damage during combat this turn. The attacking player may pay two and a red for an attacking creature to have it deal damage as normal. Wow, what a plank. This I definitely is... fell asleep wow. while reading that. Yeah, so it's like a, just a tremendously bad prison type card mm -hmm. where, okay, this is really not good. I mean, this costs you a card and a creature and they can still get around it? Yeah. I mean, they have to pay a lot of mana, but... That, that's not that much mana! You put that much mana into putting this card on the board! I mean, that's fair. No. And you even have to sacrifice your creatures yeah, you on to top of... Yeah, and it has to be a white creature, too. And it's, it's not just any creature, and it's, it's a white every creature. single time that yeah. the attacking red creature would deal damage. I mean, it's nice that you can sacrifice one white creature to stop all attacking red creatures, not just one. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, maybe that saves you in a situation where your opponent has gone wide, but yikes, this is not very good. So if I recall correctly... No pun intended. Mark Poole also uh, painted a handsome man on the art of Ancestral Recall, you know, and that kind of card they figured out eventually is too good. So eventually, like, as a few years later in Magic, they started making cards that were really bad. But Mark right. Poole was still there to make them look great. I like uh, how he's holding a baby. Yeah, well, he's holding, I mean, it's the, so yeah. heroic. the yeah. art is awesome. He's holding, he's in armor. He's got cool, like, wings coming out of the side of his head. And he looks and, basically like 80s Thor. Yes, and, <laughs> exactly. And yeah. he's holding a baby, and he's running through just a field of evil skeletons. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Getting this baby out of there. Um, can you bring up or, Den Protector? Kind of or, or, pro Protector. or possibly uh, delivering the baby to the skeletons. We no, don't know. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the card is called heroism, not jerkism. I mean, if we're to understand the flavor of like the... Den Protector? Den Protector does the same thing. It's also carrying a baby, right? Or does she have it like, Yeah, this, it's sort of like her? satcheled to her waist, yeah. which seems... Maybe not quite as safe. I she think. should get a little baby or, uh, you know, an ergo uh, soft structured carrier, and then she could put both hands on her sword or yeah, her what, axe what or was, whatever it is. What was the, there was another, there's another card where she actually has, she has a baby That's in, in like... Morrowind, in, isn't it? From the new set. Yeah. Right. It, it, she has got like a front mounted yeah. baby. Oh, uh, great. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, the elves know. Yeah, they understand. Yeah, exactly. All right. Heroism is a very pretty picture. Well done, Marple. Good job. Yeah. All right. Next up, uh, we have Icacian Scout. Uh, so for one white mana, you get a soldier. For a, It's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, and one tap, target creature gains first strike until end of turn. I stopped paying attention. What's going on? It, hey, it's a 1-1 one, one for one. Yeah, Those are acceptable stats. Yeah, at back You aren't in the day. overpaying. Well, I mean, even now. Like, yeah, sure, yeah, you want to... Yeah, but you're not to, excited uh, to pay for... Oh, no, 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 it's not good, but it's not <laughs> heroism level bad. That's fair. Yeah, right. yeah, it's like you could put this in your deck, and 20 turns later, your opponent might be dead if their deck was full of heroisms. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Sorry, I, I was trying to find... there's. Fallen Empires, of course, has right. multiple All arts. The art. All yeah. multi multiple arts. Which I love. Not only do they have... now Nowadays, they occasionally do, you know, alternate arts. But alternate they, art promos, usually, yeah. But they have them done by the same yeah. artist. And, like, do you want your Icacian Scout to be uh, this guy? <laughs> do you want it to be, uh, you know, the one that we have on the card there? Do you want it to be uh, this thing? <laughs> What, what the, the f***? Skaha Folio is a Cation Scout riding a doesn't, huge bat, right? Doesn't have flying. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's weird. It's flying really low to the ground. Or this. Yeah. These are just like, these are like mm. different, really different interpretations yeah. Yeah. even. Like, I, I, like you know, I don't know. I actually, I kind like of Like they were given that. different yeah. briefs. 
for yeah. what an Ication, or possibly no brief as to what an Ication scout is. Yeah. The, the art direction's a lot more kind of reined in now, obviously. Oh, yeah. But, all right. Anyways, go on. Let's move on. We got Elvish Hunter next. You want more 1-1s? One this one costs two. One and a green for a 1-1 one, one elf. And for one uh, green and tap, target creature does not untap as normal during its controller's next untap phase. That is not a green ability. Weird. Um, no, we don't get that kind of flavor. It's pretty just... sweet, though. For two mana, you can just keep a creature locked down after this it attacks seems... once. Or yeah, with I... Icy, you know? It's kind of like bad royal assassin. Yeah. yeah. This is... This is uh... This is totally fine in some sort of, like, janky elf commander deck. Honestly, I think this is probably the best card in the pack so far, yeah. and that's not saying much. I, I like the scout a little more, but yeah, it's it's a bad set. It's really bad. Yeah. All the cards are bad. Uh, next up, Necrite. Necrite? I, I always Necrite. said Necrite. Necrite. Yeah. I, I don't know. Let's go with Necrite. Necrite. Wow, that, that album, art, or that looks like the art of... Um, some sort of metal album. <laughs> Sorry, I can't keep going on any longer without pointing out that Him to Turok is good. All right, Let's keep going. I said all the cards are bad. Look. Yeah, that's fair. Him to Turok is really good. Uh, so this is one black black for a Thrall. Uh, it's a 2-2. Two -two. And whenever it attacks and isn't blocked, you may sacrifice it. If you do destroy target creature defending player controls, it can't be regenerated. Oh, so they just always block this. Yeah. Or, I mean, if you can, you know, figure out a way to get evasion on it, yep. you know, this is actually kind of not bad. 3 mana 2-2, two, two, not terrible stats. I mean, imagine compar uh, partnering that with the Icacian Scout. So it has first strike, but they basically always have to block it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately... Congratulations, this, yeah, you built a 5 mana White Knight. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, also, also, it looks like a 3 inches of Blood album cover. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, do you, want, uh, do you want that one? Or you could also have this guy. Mm -hmm. That's worse. R.I.P. Christopher Rush. <coughs> uh, or you could have that guy. That's... We don't have watercolors in Magic anymore. No. <coughs> I kind of like that. It's neat. It's neat, right? As I an adult, like I appreciate Drew Tucker's art a lot more than I did as an 11-year-old. That's Yeah, yeah, Drew, yeah. Drew Tucker uh, has <coughs> some of the most um, I, uh, sort of impressionistic. Yeah, most abstract, most impressionistic. The Holy yes. Light, you probably remember. Mm, oh, yeah. yeah. Nice, nice watercolor butt there. Yep. Uh, but yeah, he... Uh, the, yeah, you don't really get the like impressionistic art anymore. No. Not unless it's like a destroy all creatures kind of thing. Merc yeah, dwellers. Maybe. Merc dwellers, yeah. Uh, all right, next up. Hey, look who we got. We got him to Turok. There it is, and it's even the expensive one. R.I.P. Quentin Hoover. Aww. Black, black. Sorcery. Target player discards two cards at random from his or her hand. If target player does not have enough cards, his or her hand, entire hand, is discarded. This looks great. What a great, what a great card! What a great looking card! This is fantastic. Yeah. My favorite is still the fancy dinner party. I don't even remember who the artist is. Maybe Sandra Everingham. I'm not sure. Anyways, um, but yeah, him to Turak, best card in the set. Not close. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Just the fancy dinner party. Mm -mm. No, that's the the dark ritual one or whatever. Like that's like the you know they're they're dancing around a swimming pool. Kitty pool. Uh -huh. I like calling this one the kitty pool. The kitty pool. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's also there's, there's the wolves. So that's yeah. the most popular one. Is yeah. Susan Van Camp. Yeah, and then they, the fourth one is my well, favorite. Three discard moon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's that one. It's Scott Kirshner. Well done. So this one's just the creepiest, right? Like the name of the card is him to Turak. Turak being like a de demon or something in the lore. I'm not really sure. Turak is some sort of bad guy, and his followers are like worshiping him, and that makes your opponent discard cards somehow. Right. And this art. Is like, okay, so I have a green hat on, I'm kind of drunk. What were you just saying? And the other guy is just like, I have a snake on the top of my head, and it's looking <laughs> at you really funny, and I have very good posture, this, sir. This looks like a Dixit card. Sure. It kind of does, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, well right. done. It's my. It's the one I play for. Open Dixit on. with magic art could be interesting. Hmm. Old Ooh. magic art. Yeah, that's true, actually. Uh, next up, we've got the Goblin Chirungian. Chir 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 I just always assumed it was like supposed to be surgeon, and it's like a weird way of spelling a it. Weird way, Goblin yeah. Chimichanga. Goblin yeah. Chimichanga. Uh, one red for an O2. Hey, look at those stats. And for zero, sacrifice a goblin to regenerate a target creature. Um, I, I mean, yeah. I played it for a while. I mean, it seems, in like Highlander. Or yeah, something? yeah, I got played. Yeah, I'm sure it doesn't make the cut anymore. It no, it's the one no. with he, there's a goblin on the table he's, and he's getting his legs. He's sitting off. down. It's a goblin it sitting on a table. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, the art uh, really matches what the card does, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's an O2 for one, so it's playable. Yeah. Especially in this format. Uh, and Lots last, one ones all day. last <laughs> but not least, Homerid Warrior, four and a blue. 
summons a Homerid. It's a 3-3, three, three. what a body. And for one blue, Homerid Warrior may not be the target of spells or effects until end of turn and does not untap as normal during your next untap phase. If Homerid Warrior is untapped, tap it. I like that they brought Homerids back into Dominaria. Yeah. There's one Homerid. But, yeah, I mean, basically... Uh, Paul, this the, one's the lobster with a lance. Yeah. If you're looking for the warrior. Yeah. yeah. There it is. There he is. Um, so pay one blue to kind of give him hexproof, uh, but that causes him to tap. So, you know, you save your 3 3, but it taps down and, and stays tapped for your next turn. All right. Uh, Which is not great. shroud, technically. Yeah. Even if it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, I like One blue homeward warrior gets shrouded until the end of turn and doesn't untap during your next untap step. Tap homeward warrior. Uh, okay. All right. Cool. What if it's already attacking? Then um, it still attacks, right? Yes. If it's if you attack and they try to target it, I don't know why they would because they can read the card. It's it's on board there. <laughs> uh, Maybe just to tap your blue. <laughs> you just tap your blue and you're like, all right, I guess that's. I guess I pulse. exerted this. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, I like did like how they gave a lobster an extra shell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why? Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> it's like, well, is it a hermit crab? It's, is that kind yeah, of what it is? Maybe well, it's, it's a hermit a, crab maybe, shell. Maybe it's just yeah. a backpack. Yeah. All right, so we all first pick him to Turok. Correct. Um, well, yeah, I mean, if it was me and I already had my four him to Turok, I might first pick that River Merfolk, because I think I had to trade for those. River Merfolk is the rare. <laughs> is it? Yeah. That's sad. Wow. All well, right. Well, this is Fallen Empires, kids. But yeah, yeah him to Turok is the most expensive card. Oh, boy. All right, next up. We rolled an eight. One, two, 2014. three, 2014. four, 2014. five, six, seven. Boom. Cons of Tarkir. This is from Mike Scott at GP Vegas last year. Uh, so we're getting through. You know, we're, we're getting there. Uh, Cons of Tarkir, really good set. I love this set. Great this set for a, drafting three yeah, of. Yeah. Super, oh, super yeah. great Faith three Cons, of. Cons was also a good format. I like that format a lot. I yeah. prefer triple cons. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. As they, they had different feels. Like when you when you draft fate cons cons, you're usually like two color deck. Yeah. Triple cons, you're usually a three, three color, color deck. deck yeah. And three if color you're two, feels so good. Yeah, yeah. It's like everyone's doing three color. You're never usually under the gun. It's fine. You're gonna get to flip your morphs. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you did go for a two color deck in in triple cons, like you're conceding some power for some tempo, probably. It's kind of. You could really neat. blow people out though if you yeah, had a pretty yeah. good two color deck. Yeah, yeah. You could just like get out. Of try to be a turn faster. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first up, we've got the. Anok Bondkin. One in a white for a 2 1. A human soldier. It has Outlast, which reads one and white and tap. Put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. Uh, you can only Outlast as a sorcery. Outlast was very good. Um, each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has first strike, which means you can play this on two, Outlast it on three, and then attack with it on turn four as a 3 2 with first strike. Uh, which which is, is very good. Which is pretty damn good. It is very good in this format. And there was a lot of other really good, like, this isn't even, like, one of the great Outlast cards. This is just one of the sort of nuts and bolts you're going to play this. So these these creatures, there was a set of them spread across uh, green, white, and black. They belong in the lore of the game to the Abzan houses. And they were kind of like slivers, right? Because they, they there was they, a bunch of them that had yeah. Outlast and also pumped all creatures that you control with a, first, with a plus and plus encounter on them. They didn't all share a creature type or anything like that. No. Um, I think one of them's an assassin, there's a soldier, maybe there's like a wizard. But uh, yeah, exactly. But they do kind of like act like slivers where you have a bunch of kind of fair lords. Yep. Yeah. They're cool. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is something far less exciting, which is the Wetland sand, Sam Bar, not Sand Bar, Sam Bar. Uh, one in a blue for a 2 1 elk. That's it. I don't recall this card being particularly good. No, you just played it if no. you needed one more I mean, two drop in your Yeah, if you just needed the two drop well. piker, then you're you're gonna play this card. But, but it's one of my all time favorite pieces of magic art. Yeah? Yeah, I it's really, a good art. I really like this picture. Yeah. And it fair. looks awesome foil. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, next up we've got Valley Dasher. Mm. One and a red. It is a two two. It has haste and it attacks each turn if able. This card was not that great. No. Oh, I thought this card was fine. Uh I, I never really liked this card because it, it just felt like you threw it away too often, like, they could just easily trade, easily did, just eat it. Did you ever play to. Suicide Mardu? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, in Suicide right. Mardu, yeah, sure, like, that All was a fun kind of card. All you cared was the raid trigger. Yeah. yeah. Or there was, or sorry, you were saying, too, if you could try to get, a, like, a two-color deck, if you could put this guy in a one-color deck with some of the half-decent raid red cards, it was okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fair. I, uh, I've died to this card. I think it's fine. I think it's very, like, 
marginal. I would say it's more playable than the sandbar by quite a bit. Oh yeah, the sandbar was very bad because it was like sort of like the the name of Cons of Tarkir was like get your like uh, like um, clan bonus essentially. Like mm-hmm. what were they called? Like the houses? The, the they, well, they each had different. Oh, they were the they were clans, right? No. Yes. No, clans is right. Yeah. Like so, each of the three color wedges yeah. belonged to. Yeah, I like, think it was the clans. Yeah. I think clans is right. Because one of them's called the Abzan Hoses, but then yeah, then there's this they've got some different names like the well, the Saltai and the, yeah, and I don't know Mardu if they they aren't I don't know if they all have Jeskai. And... I think clans is equivalent to guilds here, though. I think yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Groups affiliations. You wanted your affiliated bonuses, right? Like right. all of the Outlast cards work together, and right. the, but there were some just like these cards will go in any deck, and because they didn't have any synergy, they were like less good. Right. right? Well. The haste is kind of good for Mardu because it means. Oh no, I was talking about the, the elk. Oh yeah, yeah, the elk. Yeah, the just, elk. Is, just a throwaway so hiker. Yeah, you, yeah. You can see that there's the watermark. If you're watching right now, you can see that there's the actual watermark mm-hmm. on the cards, and the elk does not have the watermark. Yeah, when you were drafting the set, you typically wanted to try and stay within the watermarks if mm-hmm. you could, just because. You... Yeah, the elk is kind of like if you've ever played StarCraft Two, and like you have units that you control, and so does your opponent. But also, there's just like some random like flying whales, and you can <laughs> click on them, and they'll go like, oh, but they you don't they don't That's win the game for exactly you. Exactly what it's like. All right, next up, we've got the Firehoof Cavalier, uh, or cavalry, not cavalier. Uh, one or one white for a one one human berserker three in a uh, three in a red, it gets plus two plus zero oh, and gains trample until end of turn. Uh, meh. Meh. Yeah, this this was not Super a card. Meh. Yeah, yeah, this is not a card you wanted to pick up very much. Uh, Sadisi's pet, oh. three in a black for a zombie ape. It has life link. It's a one four and it has morph. Really quickly, morph is you may cast a morph card uh, face down as a two two creature for three colorless and then at any time you can morph it for its morph cost, so I could pay three colorless to put this face down, and it's essentially a 2-2, two, two, and then at any point I could pay the one in the black to flip it, and then it becomes the one forward with lifelink, so. Oh, this was so good on blocks. Yeah, this was a great little blocker. I love this card. So you play it as a, you play it as a face down morph, and then like maybe punch for a turn, and then, you know, there, maybe they've got like a 3-3 three, three that comes in, and then you hold your 2-2 two, two back, and then, surprise, yep. blocked. Yep. I thought this card was barely playable unless your opponent had Hordling Outburst, in which case it was an auto-include. Ooh, hor- yeah. Ooh. Oh, Hordling Outburst is so good. Uh, hey, we talked about these guys last week. Well, not these mm. guys particularly, but four twos for threes. I don't like them. <laughs> so this, the mechanic of the Teamer clan was ferocious. Yes. So right. just having anything with four, four power, power on the board was, was kind of like... yeah. So no. this was more playable in this set, but I still don't like four twos, and no, you can't change terrible. my mind. No, they're terrible. Because they're they, they, <laughs> the four I don't twos traded off to too many bad morphs. <laughs> For sure. Uh, oh, speaking just, of. Yeah, there's Hordling Outburst. Oh, sorry. Hordling Outburst, the card I mentioned earlier, was a pretty important uh, limited card. It's a pretty important constructor card, too, actually. But uh, yeah, it's just three mana sorcery to make three goblins. They're all one ones. And the Mardu clan usually tried to pump them somehow. Um, or like just get bonuses by having a bunch of attackers, or having a creature attack every turn because as they have raid. So it's like you you can either attack with a whole bunch of little dudes and then pump them to win, or you can just be like, okay, I have three dudes. I'm gonna send one in every turn. They're always just gonna die, but I get my raid bonuses. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, Saltai Scavenger, mm. oh. five and black for a three three. It has flying and it has delve, which reads each card you exile from your graveyard while casting the spell pays for one colorless. So if you have five cards in your graveyard that you do not care about, you can cast this for essentially a single black mana. It, God, that was such vague. a good, powerful mechanic. It's, yep. it's the first This is just giving so me far. fuzzy feelings about uh, <laughs> playing Sultai. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Awaken the Bear. Two and a green for an instant. It is a combat trick. It gives target creature plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Uh, so this is something that, I mean, could be used on either attack or defense. Obviously, you're hoping that you're using this on defense or on attack and not defense. Um, but yeah, I, I do like giant growth that gives trample. Yeah. Is it, is it, I don't know if it's necessarily worth the extra like two mana. The third mana is such a big extra point of mana yep. on a combat trick. Yep. Oh, yeah. Like, Especially a common combat like trick. Like two mana for a combat trick, okay, I'm still in. But the third mana, you really have to consider because most of the time, if you're an aggressive deck, you're trying to push through blockers with combat tricks. Three mana is shutting down your play for the turn, whereas yeah. two mana, it might be like you attacked on turn four, you can play a two mana trick and play, play a barrel. So. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's the problem. Is like you, if you're an aggressive deck, you don't want to be using your entire turn casting one combat trick. You want to be developing your board. Yep. That said, this card was great at winning the game because they might be chump blocking your big guy, mm -hmm. and now they're just taking all just the taking damage. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, next up, we've got Naturalize. Uh, classic sideboard card. One in a green. Instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. I recall it not being particularly good in this. No, I mean, the, the artifact... There are some artifact creatures. Yeah, but... The, oh, there's the ascendancies. If your opponent had an ascendancy, you might want to bring it in. Uh, yeah. Although, a bunch of them kind of got most of their value off of an ETB trigger. ETBs, but yeah. So, again, it's yeah. like, it's... It's one of those sideboard cards. So. It's not like to the point where like we are in like like standard now, where like these like artifact and enchantment yeah. cards are actually pretty damn good in draft. Yeah, like naturalized main deck in Dominaria for sure. Like, yeah. 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 No, that's fine. Like I like if I'm in green, I always want a broken bond because there's mm -hmm. something I'm gonna get with it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so it wasn't like that in console. Last common we have the Jungle Hollow. It is a tap line enters the battlefield tapped. Uh, you gain a life. Uh, so this was a very common. Uh, play first play of the game. Uh, it was a joke that when you played Cons Limited, basically everybody started at 21. Yep. Yeah. Uh, tap to add black or green, and there was a whole cycle for these. Uh, they were great. Yeah. You, you, you really They're the best common tap lands. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, next up, Blinding Spray. Four and a blue. We are into the uncommons. Four and a blue for an instant. Creatures you control get minus four, minus O oh until your, creatures end. Creatures your opponents control. Yeah, sorry. Creatures yeah. your opponents control gets minus four, minus O oh until end of turn. And you draw a card. I don't recall playing this a lot. I I also don't. No one played it a lot. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just like a blue fog I, well, that replaces no, you can, itself. Well, you can kill your you can I mean, kill yeah, your opponent's you can, creatures. It can be blue plague wind. This is like if yeah. They, they attack or block. Then like theoretically any yeah, but any it's combats five? that are happening. Yeah, yeah it no, costs, it costs a lot of mana, mana yeah. and it doesn't always guarantee you the, that you're going to kill anything. The ceiling, so. the ceiling of value on this card is very high. Though. I feel like they, this is like an early attempt at what they were doing with like the the deep freeze kind of style cards that we have nowadays, and like the ones that were in like Theros, where it's like target creature gets like minus six, minus zero, oh, and stuff like that. They're like, how, what sort of cost do we want for these, and what kind of like benefit do they right. get out of it? To like. It's is the very blue way of dealing with a creature is that you don't kill it but you neutralize it, right? Right. So you don't you don't you know, so I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't uh, get played a lot. No. no. Uh, next up, Armament Corpse. Two white, black, green. This is Obzon. Uh, when an armament corpse enters the battlefield, distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures you control. It uh, is also a 4-4. Four, four. I'm going to get in before the chat and just let you know that it's armament core. Yes, sorry. It's human soldier, not zombie. Pardon me. Armament corpse. Armament corpse. That would be a sweet cool. card too, though, right? Yeah. But probably model lock. There. Do we like this card? I yeah, yeah, this do. is solid. This is a very good card. I, yeah. uh, it's totally good. Yeah, this is a good card. Great um, support card with Outlast. Yeah. It's like a signpost uncommon for Abzan, one of them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, for, for me it's close so far between this and the 3-3 three, three flying with them. Like, yeah. like if you have nothing else, it's just a 6-6, six, six, right? Uh, no. It's two plus one plus one counters among one, one or, or two. two. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, five can... mana, 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, yeah you so you can, just, you can just play it and then target it with its own ability. Yeah. And then it's never make a it 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, five mana, 6-6, six, say... six, so that's fine. Yeah. yeah, what I liked about this kind of card in the Obzon deck is sometimes it could be very slow to, like, because you could only outlast as a sorcery, so you'd have to be like, okay, well, at the end of my turn, I'm going to tap this guy and put a counter on him, but then he's not available to block. Whereas mm -hmm. this, you pick up a couple of these or one of the counter distribution cards. That was how you got that deck online. Yeah. Weirdly, like, this card, it's strong, but the Obzon deck didn't often play tempo, and this is, it's a pretty powerful tempo swing. Mm -hmm. But, like... I don't know, all the games I played, or the, I, most of the games I remember watching or play against with Obzon, is just like, the Obzon player just wants to like, totally stall the board, and mm -hmm. then like, spend five to ten turns just putting mana into all of its Outlast guys mm -hmm. and making like, gigantic creatures, and this is like, by comparison to that late, late game stage, not the most impressive draw. Yep. So. Mm. Fair enough. But it's a great card. Yeah. Alright, and our final uncommon, Dragon's Eye Savants. One and a blue. It is an 06. Uh, you can also morph it by revealing a blue card in your hand. And when it is turned faced up, look at target opponent's hand. So instead of paying mana cost to uh, flip it over, you actually just, all you need to do is reveal a blue card. Um, you can flip it up, and all of a sudden you have an 06 that blocks basically everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and you get to peek at their hand, which, you know, that's not bad. Could you reveal this card 
to morph it. If you have two of them, sure. Yeah, one on the battlefield and then one in your hand. You mean? No, but it, but your your no, uh, the morph cost is like like you're. It's playing on the it. battlefield. Yeah. No. It, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's confusing. So morph means pay three mana instead of this card's casting cost when you right, cast right, right. it. Right, right, right. The morph is the flipping. Right. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. And then morph means to flip turn face. Right. Yeah. This card was fine. All the, yeah. Any free morph cost is like a decent card because yeah. just the surprise value is good. Yeah. Absolutely. Our rare. Hmm. Dragon Throne of Tarkir. Oh, man. Well, there's your naturalized target. Yeah, four mana for a legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature has defender. And two, tap. Other creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the this creature's power. And the equip cost is three. So, I mean, for instance, what's something good that we could put it on in this set or in this thing? Like, I mean, put it on this thing, right? Put it on the Armor Room Corp. And all of a sudden you can tap to give everything plus six plus six. I think what actually the the <laughs> yeah. uh, the use case for that was a useless two two that has now been yeah. outmoded by other dudes on the battlefield. Yeah. Because it turn it gives it like plus two plus two and it, like tap I mean, yeah, is I mean, not bad. No, right? I mean plus two plus two and trample to all your creatures yeah, exactly. is really good. Yeah yeah. So you weren't putting that on your best creature. It's like a six drop uh, you want usually to have seven mana the turn you're going to really use it. Mm -hmm. Start it off equipped on one creature, tap, pump your team, then equip it to a second bad creature, tap, pump your team again, and then usually you've got enough. If, if you're, especially in a tokens deck because it's like Mardu themed, yeah. you know, your guys are big enough to yeah. mm -hmm. All win. Get through. I, I yeah. kind of like the flavor of there's like this throne, there's like the throne, the dragon throne that it's not like the king sits in it. It's just like whatever crappy guy that you don't want anymore gets to sit in the throne. <laughs> right, yeah. So right. I think Zergo sits on it in the in the lore of the first set. So what's our first pick out of this pack, actually? Uh, I, go ahead, yeah. I mean, like, realistically now, I'm like, I'm just taking the Salt Eye Scavenger, but at the time, I definitely would have taken the Armament Core. Just, yeah, just for super, super awesome value. Yeah, it's yes. like, it, Salt Eye Scavenger... Feels like you're less committed, but honestly, Delve Five, like it's like it might as well be a three color card. Like if you're gonna play mm -hmm. Delve, you're gonna want to take the blue and green cards that mill you as well, and the mm -hmm. other Delve cards as well. Um, it's of a similar power to Armament Core. The Dragon Throne's also kind of an exciting pickup, but it almost only ever plays in Mardu too. So mm -hmm. you're kind of really the most flexible pick. First first pack is Foul Orchard, or sorry, not Foul. I mean uh, Jungle, oh, the Jungle, Jungle Hollow. Jungle, Jungle Hollow. Hollow. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So. It's either that or the scavenger for me. People did do a lot of five color morphs. Yep. In I'm, this format. Yeah, not off the bat, but that's definitely what this the format turned into. So, all with, right. With no fixing available for anyone except the five color morph deck. Yeah. Ah. What'd you uh, roll? I rolled a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Saviors of Kamigawa. Oh, cool. This came from Roscoe from Mail Time in October of 2017. Thanks, Roscoe. And I don't think... No, there's nothing on the back. All right. I don't know this set at all. That's why we have Nelson here. <laughs> yeah. Kamigawa Block did painful-ish things to Constructed, <laughs> but as a limited environment, it was pretty fun. Like, there was a bunch of mechanics that we didn't see before or since. All right. And, yeah, this set in particular, Saviors, had, like, barely any cards that anyone cared about at all oh. uh, for Constructed. Like, the packs didn't sell super well, but I, then it, it made the three-set block, and, like, full Kamigawa was just, like, a really cool drafting format. All right. Well, yeah. first up, we have the Night Soil Kami, Four green that green. Night soil's poo. Yeah. <laughs> four green green for a yep. six four. And it has soul shift five. Soul shift reads: When this is put into a graveyard from play, you may return target spirit card with converted mana cost five or less from your graveyard to your hand. And this is a spirit itself. So you play this out. If it dies, you get to return a spirit card with CMC five or less from your graveyard to your hand, which is not it's. It's kind I, of I weird. like soul, soul Shift as a limited mechanic, though. Was it a good limited mechanic? It's one of those mechanics I was talking about. So if you drafted correctly, you could hopefully have like a kind of constantly recycling. With with this set, you got a one mana one one that has Soul Shift seven, I think. So it could like go down the chain and then back. Right. Um, so you could just keep 
trading your dudes off in combat and then getting them back and have have gas playing spirits forever. If assuming you drew the cards kind of in the right order. Right. So flavorful though for spirits, they never truly go away. Yeah, right. I like that. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Um, next up is sink into take numa. Take numa. Take numa. Yeah. Three and a black for a arcane sorcery spell. It has sweep. Return any number of swamps you control to their owner's hand. Target player discards a card for each swamp returned this way. That's weird. Yeah, it's a weird card, right? You got to pick up your lands with sweep. So the the most uh, played ones, I think, in the environment were white and maybe the red one or the green one got a bit of play. The white, the white sweep card pumped your team. Okay. So um, Return thanks. Any Charge across the Arava. Yeah. Right. So it's like you return planes, and then all your creatures get plus one, plus one for each planes, and it's an instant. Ooh. So it's like five mana. It's like overrun at instant speed. You make an attack. In green, or in, in white. white. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like you make an attack. Right, there's also this, right, so there's a common and uncommon one. But I think Charge Across the Araba was like the most... It seems really good. Yeah, it was like the most scary played sweep card. Um, yeah, this black one, I don't know, it's kind of like a mind sludge, but with this extra huge cost of returning your swamps... I'm sure there's. I'm sure there are controlling matchups, or if you're up against like the Soul Shift deck or something, you there's might the, you might want to mind twist them. There's the uh, red one. Return any number right. of mountains you control. Uh, deals damage to target twice creature. Twice the number. Twice the number. Of so mountains. this was just a fairly powerful common removal spell. You didn't even necessarily need to it's like a, stone, you know, mana screw yourself yeah. in order to kill a big creature. You might just return two mountains and then replay one of them immediately, right? Interesting. Um, but yeah, the uh, the most played sweep card that you're the most scared about, I think, was just the one that suddenly pumped all, this, all the attacking creatures. Interesting. Uh, Alright, next up we have a white card, Kitsune Lore Weaver. For one and a white, you get a Fox Cleric. Hell yeah. Two and one. Uh, and for one and white... Uh, Lore Weaver gets plus O plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Uh, yeah. As a yeah, eh, seems kind of meh. This card's not playable, but hey, there are <laughs> humanoid Hooray, foxes it. on Kamigawa. Yeah, Sweet, right. I mean, the art is super cool. I mean, Kamigawa looks great. Yeah, yeah. yeah the whole art direction sets. Like, I mean, if impeccable. you've got a few cards in your hand, like if you've got like three or four cards in your hand, this could get. Big fast. It just punches I mean, toughness. Yeah, but its toughness yeah. could get big. Sure. Like, yeah, pretty fast. Blocker, it can block real well for a bunch of mana. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, only having it, and then and then you put in you know Doran or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> get okay. your Doran in there. Maybe it goes in. We Doran found deck. the edge case. Great. Did it. Uh, so Kenzan Spellblade, uh. four and a red for a two three. It's an ogre samurai shaman. Uh, it has Bushido 1. When this blocks or becomes block, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. And for 1 and a red, the spell blade, spell blade gets plus X, plus O until end of turn, where X is the total number of cards in your hand. So, uh, very similar uh, mechanic or activated ability as the last card, but just the other way around. But, but, but it's a 5 drop. Yeah. So how many cards are you going to have by the time you cast yeah. a 5 drop? Well, yeah, surprise, probably. surprise, the... Uh, the opposite ability of the fox, where it pumps its power, is actually pretty good. Even if you only have, if you can get up to three cards in your hand, yeah, you're gonna because it's a five drop. Also, you probably are easily gonna have mana available to pump it three times. Oh yeah. So if he do, they don't block it, like yeah. you might just kill them. That's fair. So and I mean, it's got Bushido as well. Yeah. Which is nice. So it gives that extra power. And it's not incredible, but it, this one was played. Okay. Sure. Yeah, this fair one was played. Okay. Uh, I, I believe Bushido was one of the is one of the abilities that. Mark Rosewater has said that they would want to bring back, but not, not Bushido, but not like uh, Kamigawa flavored. Yeah, they, yeah. they kind of they 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 regret f making mm. a bunch of the uh, keywords in Kamigawa very specific to Kamigawa. Yeah, right. Not yeah. making them evergreen abilities or whatever. Yeah, because it's a little bit like prowess, right. but but totally fixed. Like, yeah, you know, prowess can lead to like dangerous decks that like, need to be dealt with. I think Ninjutsu was the other one that they yes. liked, right. but but again. It's, it's kind of weird anywhere else, yeah. yeah. Right. Fair enough. Uh, next up, we've got a blue card. Oppressive Will. Two and a blue for an instant counter target spell, unless its controller plays one for each card in your hand. The I don't set... think Will is that bad. I think Will gets a bad rap. <laughs> um, Thanks for the giggling, Will. <laughs> He's exactly that bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> overall, wow, this set really likes the uh, cards in your hand thing. 
Yep. Um, That's one of the themes. So, How many I mean, draw spells were there? If, there are these cards that let you put your lands back in your hand, so they oh. comboed well with those. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, three cards in your hand, and this is Mana Leak. Nope, not quite. It's more expensive Mana Leak. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this seems like kind of an okay counter spell, but it's not, not great. great. Yeah. yeah. Not great. There's the Splice into Arcane, which also allowed you to, like, do stuff cards well, in your hand. Well, yeah, you exactly. take cards out of your hand. Yeah. So. Like, compare this to Supreme Will. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's, Which is a three mana counter spell. It's right. Supreme From though. Home. This is just oppressive. Yeah, it turns out having Supreme Will is the better will than yeah. oppressive will. <laughs> Everyone wants Supreme Will to come over to the party. Oppressive Will, they're like, eh, yeah. God, should we invite that here. guy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, Fiddlehead Kami, Ooh. four and a green for a uh, three three spirit. Whenever you play a spirit or arcane spell, regenerate Fiddlehead Kami. Uh, so. Uh, I mean, 3-3 uh, three, three for 5 seems not fantastic. Having, you know, fairly uh, okay regeneration, I guess, I mean, makes it a little bit better. I if you but... had, like, instant speed spirit. Yeah. You could or... also just cast your spirits, then attack then with Then attack with it, and, yeah. Like, I mean, know, there's a lot of instant arcane if spells. So. If they don't have yeah. a block that's with a 4-4, four, four, then maybe they have to trade a creature or take 3. Yeah. So there's that. This but card was just, not great because the stats aren't great. Yeah, yeah, the stats just aren't great. Yeah. The, the stats for most of these cards have been kind of not great. Honestly, the Soakins and Spellblade is the best card in the pack so far. All right. Uh, Murmurs from Beyond, two and a blue for instant arcane. All right. Reveal the top three cards of your library. An opponent chooses one. Put that card into your graveyard and the rest into your hand. There you go. It's a draw two. So it's just a draw two. Um, draw the worst two. You draw the worst two, but uh, I mean, that's maybe not the worst, you're still drawing two cards for three mana. And if you're playing the Spirits deck, you're probably the creature going into your bins, not the worst. Sure. Yeah. It's an arcane it's spell. Yeah. You could splice things onto arcane with it. Yep. All right. Yeah. Seems, seems reasonable. Works with your fiddlehead canny. Uh, next up, we've got Dosan's Oldest Chance. Oh, baby. Um, four and a green for a sorcery. It reads, you gain six life, draw a card. I have a strange fondness for this card. <laughs> It's not good. It's not good, but <laughs> I just liked I just liked playing expensive uh, Naya cards. When I first got into Highlander, I was like playing this Naya um, Canadian Highlander deck that was Naya Ramp. Okay. And I had like some Planeswalkers and some Titans and some like ridiculously big creatures and like some bad mana ramp with like rampant growth and stuff like that. And I had a Soul Ring and a Noble Hierarch in there too, so I had like some good cards. But right, right. yeah, I, I at one point was playing Dosa's Oldest Chant because I was just like, I want to play some life gain spells. And this one draws a card and five mana, that's no big deal. So I, I definitely played this at a Canadian Hall at least once. We Monster. have better options now. I think this was like I, this was before you know Core Firewalker was printed. I was playing this card. All right. Yeah. Uh, Nat Miser. It's not good. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you don't black, want to play this one, one, one. Rat Shaman. Each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by one. What? Yeah, this was there was an, a counter theme to the like try to get lots of cards in your hand because your cards care. Aha! Uh -huh, you cards can only hand. have six cards in your hand now. Yeah, you only spellblade me for six now. And there was a big brother of this for like four mana. I think it was a two-two that said your maximum hand size reduced by two. Oh dang! And like they all stack, you know. So you could perma mind twist your opponent if you had enough of these bad rats. On I mean, I kind of love the idea of having like enough of these out that your opponents can't have any card in their yeah. hand. Yeah, that's kind of hilarious. That sounds super unfun. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying it's a good thing. I'm well, just the saying. thing is, like, they still can have cards in their hand during their turn, right? That's how hand just... size works. They have to clean up down to zero. Yeah, yeah. Right? All right. Um, Next I've up. never seen a deck that really profited from that, by the way, and I think the mechanic is only in this block. Next yeah. up is the Araba Moth Rider. Uh, one and a white for a 1-1 one, one flying human samurai, which has Bushido 1. Um, this doesn't seem terrible. I mean, if it wasn't for Bushido 1, it would be very not good. Um, but I guess as long as it's being, you know, blocked as a 2-2 two -two, as a flyer, I guess it's not the worst. I don't like this it's, very much. I mean, it's not great, but like, uh, yeah. It has flying, guys. Like, we haven't hit another. Card yeah, I mean, yeah. Flying. In this in this limited format, it That's seems like fair. this is just gonna take twenty turns and we're gonna win. So. The, there are a lot of equipment in this this block too. Oh. Like, you know a bunch who, of random who hangs out with the net miser? Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. There you go. Yeah, oh, yeah. God damn, love it. Uh, next up, we've got inner fire. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Three and a red for a sorcery. It says add one red to your mana pool for each card in your hand. How, how are you supposed to net mana off this? Have at least five, five cards, cards in your hand. Thanks for asking, Kathleen. <laughs> but, but like, like at that's four not, mana? I'm not saying it's good. So what you do is okay. you, you play this other card from... it's Because this card actually does get played in Popper. You can storm. There's still a storm card that lets you search your library for basic lands and put them in your hand. So you have a turn where you like play some spells, then play that storm card. Then you go find like eight basic lands from your hand. Then you play this. Now you like made a whole bunch of mana because there's okay. like 13 cards okay. in your hand, and then you keep going off from there. Sure. And then you eventually ire of Kaminari them or something. There's a damage spell for cards in your hand too. Yeah. Okay. okay. But I don't think I ever saw this card played in limited. Uh, next up, Ghost Lit Redeemer. Oh, this what card is super lit. Art. Uh, one white for a 1-1 one, one spirit. Uh, and for one white and tap, you can gain two life. And it has channel. For one white, discard it. You gain four life. Gaining two life every single turn is actually quite good. Yeah. Yeah, gaining in, two life. In, in and, draft. And, and even maybe in commander. like it, Or in you know any kind of slowish. And this is a very easy card to, I mean, bring back with Soul Shift. Which mm. means you can... Easily just discard it, gain four life, bring it back, discard it, gain more life. So, yeah. Can we talk about how absolutely lit this art is? It's like. Uh, Let's put it back on the card. It's here like for a second. Ray Ryu bursting through a wall with a lantern. Yep. It's pretty cool. All right. Next up Molting Skin. Whoa. I'm afraid of you, Molting Skin. Two and a green Don't for an enchantment. That. Return Molten Skin to its owner's hand. Regenerate target creature. No. This can't possibly be good, right? The third line of text says, have nightmares. <laughs> this is like part of the, it's one of the points on the curve of like regeneration matters, the 25 year long quest huh. of WotC. <laughs> um, it's even an enchantment. They're always trying to make those matter too. So yeah, I don't know. I, I like that his, his teeth and tongue are part of his skin. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. What? That's not okay. It's terrible, on. right? I want to not. Sorry, no. Th this card is not that bad, though. Like on its surface, you play it, and now all of your creatures have regenerate, right? Only one per combat step, but you know, you it does allow like all kinds of weird-looking attacks because mm -hmm. you know if they only have like one good blocker, you can just send everyone in and yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, Yuki Ona. Three and a red for a 3-1 spirit. Okay, okay. When it comes into play, destroy target artifact. All right. And when you play a spirit or arcane spell, you may return Yukiona to its owner's hand. This actually seems like... It seems totally decent. Yeah, it's it fine. seems reasonable. I mean, it, it doesn't really attack super well as a 3-1, but it's got a repeatable effect. Uh, I guess if artifacts are, you know, getting in your way, uh, you have a way of dealing with them. Again, cool art. Uh, that's always good, but all right. Uh, you said there was equipment in the set. There are, yeah. There's yeah, we haven't really seen anything, so. But, uh, oh baby, no, oh, what is it's this? Another flying creature. How do you say that word? Bounteous. 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 I thought it was bountiful, but it's bounteous. Yeah, bounteous. Kieran, five green, green for a four-four flyer, legendary creature, Kieran Spirit. Whenever you play a spirit or a cane spell, you may gain life equal to that spell's CMC. Well, there you go. That's the reason you want to keep recasting that. Uh, that last one. Yeah. So, spirit, spirit, spirit. A lot of spirits in this pack. Didn't really get spirit. any good black cards. Like, uh, you got the Nat Miser and Sinking the Takanuma. Yeah. There's multiple big green creatures. Like, that very first card, the Craw Worm, is like a, a reasonable the deck for the archetype, right? You know, yeah. it's like if we can get the bounteous. Like, maybe you're supposed to first pick the I red because it's a big flyer. Big green flyer. Yeah, it's I'd seven just, mana. It's so weird that it's green. Seven, seven mana, mana for a four, four flyer, flyer green. in green yeah. doesn't make any sense. I would take it, though. I mean, I, I like Ghostlit Redeemer yeah. the most, but this card's probably my second favorite pick in right. this pack. Fair All right. enough. Do we have time to do one more pack? Yeah, let's one do one more, more pack. We'll do it a little bit quick. Uh, roll How about we just crack the M14 pack? Aw. It's six thin. Before, Not anymore. We weren't sure where we wanted to oh, uh, broadcast yeah. from, so we rolled, we to rolled find the dice. A, find a pack, and then we hit M14. And no one M14. knew any of the place names. Uh, M14 is from nobody. Whoa! Random crack a pack. Of I mean, sure, it's from somebody. We just don't have a name on it. We didn't. If you gave us a pack, pack of M14 team. in the last few years, this might be yours. I really love this set. This I would a, draft this set again anytime. This I'm was a good set. Very happy the core set is back. I like core Yeah, I draft. can't wait to draft. Yeah, yeah core set yeah. needed to come back. Is that? Uh, Did we do it? it yeah. 
First card while Paul's pulling that up is the Undead Minotaur. Two and a black for a 2-3. This That's is, fine. It's a callback to Hurloon Minotaur, one of the original poster boys of magic with art by Anson Maddox of a cool Minotaur with a bunch of, like, tattoos on his face. Nice. And this is in black. Uh, the Minotaur is back from the dead, and it has the exact same stats, and it's slightly easier to cast. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, Plummet. One and a green. Destroy target creature with flying. That is a sideboard card. Green yeah. Doom Blade. Yep. You can main deck it if you want, if your deck will win unless your opponent has a flyer. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Master of Diversion. Oh, two and yeah. a white for a 2 2 human scout. Whenever it attacks, tap target creature, defending player controls. That's a good card, too. I don't recommend playing white in this format, but if you do, play this guy. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's was a wrong? Was classic wrong white, white ability. Was it wasn't white? blue. All right. Yeah, blue was sick. Yeah, you just wanted to be blue or black or blue black as much as you could in this format. Fair it enough. was the best. Uh, shock. Classic. One red. Instant deals two damage to target creature or player. Perfectly reasonable burn spell. What a good card. One like of the it. reasons why you didn't want to play red too often. That's fair. Is this why you wanted to play blue? <laughs> it's why I always want to play blue. The armored cancrix. Yeah, four to blue guy. for a 2-5. He's a crab. It's a big, it's a big sea creature. Creepy crab. It's stands like in front of everybody and never dies to shock. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't even die to two shocks. Yeah. This requires three shocks. A <laughs> uh, lot of just vanilla things. Um, of course, that's supposed to be pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Regathan Firecat. Uh, two and a, uh, two and a uh, red, I can talk. For a 4 1. If you didn't like 4 2s, how do you feel about 4 1s for hate three? Them so much. Even worse. <laughs> <laughs> they're so bad. 4 1s yeah. for three are significantly worse. They're bad. Yeah, they're real bad. Uh, Messenger Drake. Hey, Ooh, this was flying. a card. This was oh, a card that you liked yeah. in blue. Yeah. Uh, three blue, blue for a 3 3 flyer. Drake, when it dies, draw a card. Pretty sure I lost one, at least one game of M14 to just like milling myself out because I had gotten this guy back from the graveyard so many times. Wow, impressive. Yeah. Uh, hey, here's a good green removal spell. Hunt mm -hmm. the weak. Three and a green. Sorcery, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control, then that creature fights target creature you don't control. That's a good card. That's good a card. fantastic card. Great uh, card. Like that card. Next up, I don't like this card. Tome Scour for one blue. Sorcery, no. target player puts the top five cards of his or her library into his or her Remember graveyard. When sometimes when they're like, oh, look, you could mill someone. It's like, no, I can't. You haven't actually given me anything to mill people the with. The Friday Nights just came out, you know? It's like I if mean. you just get all of these that are at the table, it's the fastest clock in the game. I feel I do feel like if you draft the mill deck, you can get there. I Sorry, not if you get all of them at the table. I meant if there's enough of them at the table. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Uh, next up, combo, or it's a little bit of a fun thing with our first card we looked at, which is the Minotaur Abomination. Four black black for a four six zombie Minotaur. And if you will recall, the first card that we had here was a undead Minotaur for two black as a 2-3. Both with uh, flavor text from Leston. So when you go ahead and you double this, you get that. There it is. It's really funny. It's cute, but right? yeah, I yeah. do like I do like that Leston's flavor text is just like shitting on the work of other ne necromancers. Right. He's like, not everybody is elegant. And it's like, well, who would do this? This is crap work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's just stitch these two minotaurs together. Uh, all right. Let's yeah. get into the uncommons. First up is the mana weft Sliver, that's right, Slivers came back, uh, and they came back kind of in a weird way, uh, but in a fixed way. Uh, this was one in a green for a 1-1 one, one creature Sliver. Uh, sliver creatures you control, so that's a big change. All the old Slivers affected all Slivers. New Slivers just affect yours. Uh, and this says, tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So you turn them all into... Uh, little mana dorks for like, you. Little, little birds of paradise. paradise. Little yeah. birds of paradise. So this was, yeah. a, this was a, a better functional reprint of, uh, I think it's Gemhide Sliver. Uh, there's one of the ones from Time Spiral. It's the same mana cost, same stats, Sliver, and it just lets your opponent's Slivers also tap for a mana of any color. So this yeah. one was a little better. Yeah, here's the thing with... Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Here's the thing with this. is like, even if you're not in a Sliver stack, fine. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, two it's mana, a, two, two mana, one mana. one, Bird's Paradise. Totally yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, blue, opportunity. Hey, oh! we did it. Four blue, blue, instant target player draws four cards. This was a pay this, this was the payload. You'd like stall out with like these armored cancrixes and then you'd cast opportunity. That was and the plan. That was, that was living the dream in M14 and it was great. It was like all the pros too totally predicted it when the spoiler came out. They're like, okay, you're going to want to be in blue and you're going to want to take opportunity and you're going to cast opportunity and then you're going to want to win because you cast opportunity and that <laughs> just is what happened. You know what stops you from losing when you're playing blue? 
and the other uh, color you talked about. What'd you want to always play? Blue black. Blue black. Yeah, so there's a <gasps> Doom Blade. Nice. Doom Blade. There it is. One black yeah. instant destroy. We got like target, the pack of M14s, all creature. the important things. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think this man. is the last time we saw Doom Blade in standard, wasn't it? I it's been a while, yeah. I believe it was the last time. It's too they good. Printed. It, yeah, I, I don't Murder. think Murder. Yeah. Murder is now Doom Blade. Yeah. And it's just a harder to cast Doom, Doom Blade. Or they're putting they're putting on two mana. They started giving us a two mana yeah. removal with more conditions and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it was last printed in uh, iconic masters. I mean, we have that was in standard. The episode. current the current uh, two mana black removal spell at uncommon is cast down. Right, there's cast and down, that's which is like story target non legendary creature, which is yeah. pretty. Which is, good, which is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty close to doom blade, and yeah. we still have fatal push in standard. And fatal push is like the best one ever. Yeah, I mean, Fatal Push is just yeah. a fantastic black removal spell. All right, last but not least, <gasps> we did it. I it's, love this card. It's Trading Post. <laughs> yeah. It has so many things you can do with it. Um, one, so cast for four. It's an artifact. And for one, you can tap it to discard a card and you gain four life. Or, one and tap it, pay one life, put a zero one white goat creature token onto the battlefield. Or, one tap, sacrifice a creature, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Or, one tap, sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. This card did it all. Yeah, it's like, do you need chump blockers? Do you need to draw cards? Do you need to get artifact? Do you need to get artifacts back? I like the idea is that the trading post is literally like, how about I trade you this for a goat, and then I'll trade the goat for something else, and I'll trade that for a card. Yeah. So flavorful. Yeah, super flavorful. Also, like the effect, it's kind of hard to parse maybe, but basically what this this card does is like comes down. It has a bit of a deck building constraint where you need to get some other jank artifacts. They can mm -hmm. be literally anything, but you need to have some artifacts in your deck so that you can do the thing where you're just like. Play it, start gaining life if you have to immediately, and then like make goat chumps, and then chump with the goat, and get back your artifacts from the graveyard by sacrificing your goats. Mm -hmm. And so it's like this slow, bad planeswalker. Yeah. So it's, it's, you're draw theoretically you could draw an extra card every four turns. Yeah, exactly. With just any other, or like say you have a Mox Opal or something, like, you know, that's a good card, but like any rock that does nothing, it's like the Dark Steel Relic is on mm -hmm. the battlefield, then it like, this card makes the goats, and then it sacrifices the goats to get back the artifact that you sacrificed to draw a card. So it does give you card advantage eventually. I and guess, it's just a lot of fun, because it has all these options. I guess every once in a while you just tap one and tap and sacrifice it to draw a card. You can do that if you're really up against it. The mm -hmm. the more common kind of desperation play is just discarding a card every turn to gain four life. Yeah. That's actually one of the things that like other decent planeswalkers don't often do for you is just like gain you life immediately. So it did have that going for it. I played it in Highlander a bunch. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. So oh you've taken a card I've, of every I've, color. Yeah I've managed to find a card of every color. We've got m white Master of Diversions, Black Doom Blade, Blue Opportunity Green Hunt the Week, Red Shock, and we have the Colorless Trading Post. Damn, what a good pack. But what do you first pick? Doom Blade. It's not close, no. You have to pick Opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't need a Doom Blade, but you can't pass an Opportunity to the neighbor to your left That's and hope true. to win this draft. That's true. You can, you you can win the draft without Doom Blade, but you can't win the draft if you're giving your neighbors Opportunity to win the draft. Yeah. All right, there you have it. We first should thank Card pick Kingdom opportunity. first. Opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right, so that is going to wrap things up for today. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks to everybody who sends in packs. We really appreciate it. At some point, I'm sure, we will get through all of these. Don't think it's going to be soon, but it'll probably happen one day. Uh, really want to quickly thank the sponsors for the podcast. Of course, we have Card Kingdom, cardkingdom.com slash LRR. That applies the affiliate code. Card Kingdom. It's a kingdom of cards. Uh, thank you so much to Card Kingdom for continuing to sponsor us uh, all these years. Love you despite guys. Despite my endorsement. <laughs> despite the, Perhaps the, the one sentence endorsement that doesn't really tell us anything about the company. Perhaps buttons will be available this week. But perhaps buttons will be available. And wow. of course, uh, we want to thank everybody over on our Patreon, patreon.com slash loading ready run. We couldn't continue to do what we do without your support, so thank you so much. We will be back next week talking about who knows what. Bananas? Hopefully from a location that's not so bright. I'm going to say bananas. Bye, guys. <laughs>